this was a targeted assassination. To me, this is a canary in the coal mine. Washington has summoned Russia's ambassador after a Russian jet fighter collided with an American drone over the Black Sea. Tonight, an explosion at an auto parts manufacturer in Greenville. Sorry to keep you waiting. Complicated business. Complicated. If it was me, I would watch this intro and then I would switch over to Rumble and watch that whole video because it's just the sound effects make it better. It's just easier to watch. The Rumble link is in the description. The All of the sources, all of the videos that I uh, clipped from are also in the description below. So uh, if you need that, then you know, there you go. I'm just gonna do the no sound effects thing so that, you know, if, you know, my grandmother, who just started watching recently, still wants to get the news and can't get to Rumble, here we go. It's just so, I am a little bit frustrated by the fact that they're like, no, you can't put sound effects to the news. That makes it too watchable. I'm not trying to, anyways, I'm, <laughs> you already know, you already know, like, big one to YouTube, you know? Big number one to YouTube. Best company ever. Just a big number one. Just love them so much. Fort Hood is in the news again for another female private uh, murder, potentially. Um, the moose antler guy, essentially modern day Gary Plack fucking well on you but that's that's all i got just rock on hopefully they let you out and you're good to go that was it's it's bullshit that he's even in jail a moose antler really oh my gosh that's crazy okay the cops smuggling in fentanyl into the jail like we all know it but it's just a little bit like really come on guys do a better job like either don't let people end up dead or like don't do that that's another option just don't do the illegal thing you know um the stolen valor getting six years oh my god you have to watch that on the sound effects version it's way better roy mcgrath a good old roy is trying to steal a quarter million dollars from maryland government well good try roy now you're a wanted man a fugitive you're on the run you dumbass the glass falling off the bank of america building is like worst case scenario to be honest like I've, I've wondered what it would look like if glass just started falling off the skyscrapers in our world. And oh, apparently it looks like nothing's happening. It's just like a building there. You can't really see the glass. I guess probably because it's clear. <laughs> JK, I know, really. uh, there's been a few power outages all related to storms seemingly. So I'm not too worried about them. I think we might just be getting lucky on the train derailments at this point. Like nothing is as bad as East Palestine, but there's definitely like the numbers they were giving us when they were like, look, look, <laughs> it's not as bad as you think. Train derailments happen like 1700 times a year. They actually seemingly do. That's, that's what? We don't have high-speed trains, we have train derailments. That's a tragedy. Come on, America. <sighs> Biden's payments to, uh, well, he didn't pay. He got paid by the Chinese. Um, I just n included a news clip. It's from the Congressional Committee, so it sounds like, you know, that's, they, they know what they're talking about to some degree, right? Will Trump get arrested on Tuesday? We will see. Can't wait to bring it to you next week. <clears throat> France? France is eroding in front of us. And, uh, well, Macron, it might be your time to Mac home.
tried, you know? You gotta give it a shot. Macron, it might be time for you to move on. That's, that's a, that might be better. The Black Sea get drone thing, like, I don't wanna overplay it because it's not honestly that big of a deal. But it is kind of fucked up knowing that if they hit the drone and then they crashed, they would have said America crashed into us and and it just would have been it like Russia, they're not fucking around. But, but, I do have to say, we shouldn't be over there. What are we doing in the Black Sea? Oh, we're helping the countries that ask for help because they want freedom, not authoritarian regimes. Oh, okay. Well, then I deem it necessary. Be there, help them. But, you know, we might be in World War III because- The thing I thought was interesting about Putin going to Mariupol wasn't that he went there. Um, it's that he was driving. Why was he driving himself? What? And also, Why'd you go at night, bro? Like, not good for photo ops. You just look like a fucking nitwit. NATO let in Finland, not Sweden, because Turkey and Hungary. This week, I was able to figure out this is what they're actually vying for, what Turkey wanted in the deal, and they want some people that went to Sweden because they were refugees, and they were like, yo, we're being persecuted in Turkey. We might get murdered. And so the Sweden was like, yeah, come through. And they were like, all right, cool, thanks. Um, we, we just needed to like stay here. And they were like, all right, yeah. And then Turkey was like, no, no, you're gonna give those people back. And Sweden was like, no, we're not. And Turkey was like, yeah, yeah, we gonna fuck them up. So give them on back and then you can be part of NATO. And you can fuck up whoever you want because we'll fuck them up with you. They were like, see, here's the thing, no. So Finland was like, Look, I don't have anything to do with those people, so can we come through? And they were like, yeah, yeah, come through, bud. Yes. Oh, thanks for them bomb ass bombs, bro. And Finland was like, you're welcome. And then, you know, now Finland is part of NATO, but, but if you look at a map, Sweden is protected just geographically from really getting fucked with by Russia. So like, Russia has to do quite a bit of work to try and like really fuck with Sweden. So I just, it doesn't really make sense, but like Finland having such a long border with Russia, like, yeah, all right, I get it, I get it. But anyways, um, last but not least, I mean, I guess it would be least because it's losers, but like Kamala Harris went to the basketball game that of her alma mater and then they booed her there. Like they put her her picture on the screen. They were like, boo, you suck. And then she was like, you know what? Screw y'all, I'm going, game's over. I'm gonna go talk to these players. They're the bison. And then she's like, you guys are winners. And they're like, we literally just lost. Six News reporter Sydney Deshaun spoke with Sergeant Molina, who says her journey was not always easy. Sydney, tell us more. Yeah, Chris, Sergeant Molina wasn't born in America, but she always dreamed of moving to the United States to pursue her dream of becoming a soldier. But today, she has seen the progression of Fort Hood through her own set of eyes, even after the death of Vanessa Guillen. I've seen a lot of good changes as far as the females and women in the military. I see the culture is going to the right place. And Three hours later. This morning, Fort Hood officials are investigating the death of private second class Ana Balsadua Ruiz. A combat engineer in the 1st Cavalry Division. Who served with the division for the last 15 months. Her family telling me she had complained to them about sexual harassment at the post. Fort Hood telling ABC News. The Army Criminal Investigation Division. And the chain of command. And the chain of command. And the chain of command. Are actively investigating the facts and circumstances surrounding her death. Just don't. It's just a, it just especially if you're a woman, just do not get anywhere near our military. Oh my God. 
Honolulu prosecutors have charged a man accused of killing a woman found dead at Mililani High School. Samuel Jones is charged with arson and murder in connection with the death of Laau Jordan Lau Lusa. The 21-year-old woman's body was found on Monday in a burned car at the school. Jones is being held in $1 million bail. Levi Axtell, the 27-year-old father, and as far back as 2018, Axtell told police that 77-year-old Lawrence V. Scully was stalking his 22-month-old daughter at the time and other children in his van, parking it outside of her daycare. Now, he sought an order of protection from police. It was granted, but then dismissed weeks later. The sex offender was convicted of sexually assaulting a six-year-old girl and was released from prison for that in 1982. Well, this father allegedly drove to Scully's house, beat him with a shovel 15 to 20 times before, quote, finishing him off with a moose antler. This happened about two hours north of Duluth, and right after the murder, Axtell immediately drove himself to the police station, covered in blood, and turned himself in. Alec Nealon Herrera was awaiting a trial for armed robbery. He told his family that if he was convicted to expect about a four-year sentence, but instead, because of fentanyl, they say he got a life sentence. Detectives from two neighboring counties, outside agencies are conducting the investigation here to try to figure out how the fentanyl got inside the prison. They don't think it likely came in through a visit with an inmate, an outside visitor, because since 2020, the Thurston County Jail has had all of its visits done remotely. A husband came home to find his wife in the home with another man, then shot that man in the chest. Investigators say that man had called 911 around 2 a.m. after he was shot. Deputies say that the shooter turned himself in and was found down the street. They say he was also taken to the hospital for precautionary reasons. Investigators say the woman was not injured and no one else was at home at the time of the shooting. The East Greenwich woman who posed as a wounded Marine to get donations and veterans benefits is going to prison. A federal judge sentenced Sarah Cavanaugh a short time ago. The 32-year-old was sentenced to 70 months in prison and to pay just under $300,000 in restitution to more than a dozen victims. Judge handed down the maximum sentence that federal prosecutors requested just under six years. We also heard from victims of Sarah Cavanaugh's in court talking about how, they not, how she not only stole their money, but also their confidence, trust, and respect. This is a defendant who convinced friends at the gym to bend down and tie her shoelaces because she claimed she couldn't do that. This is a defendant who got herself a service puppy to deal with supposed battlefield trauma that, of course, she never experienced because she's never served in the military, let alone on a battlefield, and then convinced her friends to bend down and pick up the dog's waist for her because she claimed she couldn't do that. <laughs> this is a beacon of hope and possibilities. This is proof that dreams dream big and dreams do come true. And ladies, don't let anybody tell you you are ever past your prime. <laughs> Never give up. All the rain this winter has had a huge impact on the Orville Lake water levels. The reservoir is now well over 100% its historic average. Lake Orville is being kept at 75% capacity to make room for what is forecast to arrive in the last month of the water year. Federal manhunt is underway. Forget this. The former chief of staff to Maryland Governor Larry Hogan. He was a no-show in court for his wire and embezzlement trial scheduled to begin Monday. A 2021 federal indictment lays out the allegations of wire fraud, embezzlement, and falsifying a government document. McGrath is facing up to 100 years in prison on the charges that he stole hundreds of thousands of dollars from the Maryland state government, most from an alleged scheme to get a hefty severance package he wasn't entitled to when he left the Maryland Environmental Services, or MES, to take a job with the governor. The indictment states McGrath requested through members of the MES board of directors a severance payment in the amount of his yearly salary $233,647.23. And then McGrath falsely represented that the governor had approved it. McGrath also is accused of falsifying timesheets while on a European vacation and stealing money for classes 
at Harvard. This happened on Wednesday evening last night at around 5.30. Those 911 calls started coming in and reports indicated that there were multiple unconscious women on the bottom level of this parking garage that my uh, photographer is zooming into right now. Initial reports again indicate Hackensack police found all of the women who were employees here displaying overdose symptoms. Those officers immediately took life-saving measures, including giving out Narcan and performing CPR. Four out of the five victims, ranging from 29 to 41 years old, were taken to the hospital. The other refused. And while- 10 million fentanyl pills, 110 pounds of methamphetamine, and seven and a half pounds of cocaine. The scene like something out of a movie. The street value is approximately $5.4 million with the totality of all the drugs that were um, seized. Surprisingly, the $5.4 million worth of drugs were found in a short-term rental, just minutes from Old Town near 86th Street in Camelback, discovered by a cleaning crew, cleaning up after residents who had rented out the home. They did the right thing. They called us right away. Detectives came out, wrote a search warrant. Once police went inside, they found weapons too. And lots of them. You think of the bigger picture on that. Um, that's the danger. Scottsdale police say now the question is who did all of this belong to and where was it supposed to be going? No arrests have been made, but they say the owner of the short-term rental has been cooperating so far. They said that they were tracking um, Mr. Camacho to this area. We uh, rallied our troops uh, very quickly. Within minutes, we had a uh, had some undercover vehicles uh, watching the house where he was supposed to be or the building where he's supposed to be. And uh, we held that down for until other units could get in the area. How was she doing when you found her? She was uh, frightened. Uh, she was locked in the building that you're seeing. Um, it, it's uh, I could only imagine what she was feeling. Uh, being picked up, uh, taken from from her home that far away, a thousand miles transporting here. Um, I can only imagine what she's going through. Who's worked to clear out the damage inside the rise at 19th apartment complex? Investigators say on March 9th, 42-year-old Tiffany Vanessa Bradley flooded the building. Documents I obtained say she tampered with a valve inside the complex, causing water to run for two and a half hours. Except 12 units in the entire property has been severely impacted. Damage was significant to this building uh, where effectively 60 some people have been, has to be moved. Do it, no, no. Monday, Bradley, who lived in the apartment complex, appeared in court. She's charged with malicious mischief for allegedly causing $2 million in damages to the apartment complex. The judge gave her a bail of $10,000. The future of drone delivery has arrived. Walmart has launched its drone delivery service at six locations across Tampa Bay. The service is live now and can be used on thousands of different products. Right now, the max weight is at 10 pounds, but that's more than enough for many, many different items. Rise up. That's the activist. That's Jane speaking. Yeah. And, and, and and she probably will get a Nobel Prize. But it's very, true. Very, very soon. It, it is true, but, but I, we're not going to do it. Besides, besides marching and, and protesting, what else do you suggest? Well, well it doesn't happen murder. overnight. It's not a miraculous... <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> murder. <laughs> She's kidding. Wait a second. She's just now, kidding. Don't say that. That's oh, not... you don't know. They'll pick up on that and yeah, just run with it. Yeah, that's the worst. She's joking. just kidding. It's... Well, let me talk to you about... <laughs> Well, here we are picking up on it, I guess. Uh, what did you make of these remarks, Bacha? Like, it's it's not, first of all, it's not funny. And it's not funny because she actually didn't mean it as a joke, you know? Like, and, um, the, like, these people don't actually believe in democracy, right? It's, it's, again, you know, when you do it, it's white supremacy. When they do it, it's defending democracy. When you do it, it's fascism. When they do it, it's, you know, protecting democratic ideals, right? The Biden administration may reinstate the practice of detaining migrant families that cross the border illegally. The irony is not lost on those who recall that as a candidate, Biden blasted the same policy as inhumane 
and racist. Quote, it is a moral failing and a national shame when children are locked away in overcrowded detention centers, Biden's campaign website still proclaims. The next president will need to take urgent action to end the Trump administration's draconian policies grounded in fear and racism, candidate Biden went on. Trump has waged an unrelenting assault on our values and our history as a nation of immigrants. It is wrong and it stops when Joe Biden is elected president. Connecticut woman murdered with an axe in her own home in front of her little boy. Well, her family is now suing the police department, the officer that was assigned to investigate her case specifically as well, and the city of Milford. The family attorney saying that the victim, Julie Minogue, reached out to police several times in the weeks before her murder about harassment from Ewan DeWitt, the father of her child. Now, police say they knew he sent 200 text messages to her in the days leading up to the alleged killing, uh, or rather leading up to him alleged allegedly killing Minogue inside of her condo in front of the couple's three-year-old son. It is not a house cat, but a serval. They sell for about $15,000 on exotic animal websites. And when it got to the Cincinnati Animal Shelter, it tested positive for cocaine. What was amazing was it has now become standard operating procedure for shelters that when an exotic animal shows up, they test it for drugs. It's getting that way. This is about the third or fourth one I've been involved with, from monkeys to the cats that have positive, uh, had a positive test for either cocaine or meth. Look at this dangerous situation in San Francisco. We've just learned a shelter in place has been ordered because glass is falling off of this building. Do you recognize it? That is the Bank of America building, the B of A building at 555 California near Pine in downtown San Francisco. In Street have been here since the 50s, well established, and that's why Lakshmi Nagaraj says she bought here. Uh, before bidding any property, we have to do research on the property. Lakshmi had her eye on this little greenhouse, 8511 Wiggins. The first time home buyer knew this was home. So on February 7th, the HISD substitute teacher bid $57,000 for the property at the monthly Harris County tax sale auction and won. She paid cash in full and started prepping for renovations as she waited for the deed. The paperwork showed up Saturday. So on Sunday, four and a half weeks after Lakshmi bought the place, she came to check on her house and it was gone. And no one is telling me who is accountable. No one informed me anything. That's all I know. Now I have a deed. I have a lot. Home just disappeared. She called Precinct 2, the agency that runs the auction. Deputies and neighbors both tell us contract crews with the city tore Lakshmi's house down within the last few weeks. She says she wasn't notified. No one informed me. The warehouse is linked to Ocean View Cremations. The sheriff's office says the bizarre investigation started after several complaints from customers to the California Cemetery and Funeral Bureau. Yelp reviews accuse the company of waiting months to cremate bodies holding ashes for years and refusing to return customers' calls after taking their money. According to the Bureau, one customer allegedly got the wrong remains. A supermarket's use of facial recognition is raising privacy concerns. A sign posted outside a Fairway store on the Upper West Side warns customers that biometric data may be collected. Like we should get a check for this, but that's just my opinion, you know. Lewis Foster is one of the many CTA riders trapped on a Brown Line train Tuesday afternoon. It just stopped completely. Many riders saying they noticed early something might be wrong. We were called hearing a pop a little bit. I take this train and when it did that curve, I knew something wasn't right. I know how it curves. This was almost tilting. There were some sparks. The train jolted a little and then it just ground to, a, ground to a halt. The CTA says this was the result of a power outage. A train stuck on the tracks above the Chicago River. You could see passengers inside. Riders say CTA employees announced updates about every 10 minutes, but the minutes turned to hours. At this hour, hundreds of thousands are without power as well. 36,000 in New York, 25,000 in Vermont, 71,000 in New Hampshire, and 60,000 in Maine. Both coasts are seeing a lot of weather action right now. The storm PG&E says 140,000 customers were without power. Days later, many are still in the dark. The outage is virtually shutting down places like downtown Los Altos. There were some areas that we couldn't access because of safety issues. And at one point, because we did see wind gusts that exceeded 90 miles per hour, our crews had to stand down because it wasn't safe for them to get work done. Tow pockets along the Arizona-California border were told it involves at least 
least eight train cars. And we want to show you some brand new images from the scene overnight. Our viewer Chris Higa sharing these with us. First responders are on scene. As of right now, we're told that there are no injuries. Now, there were reports hazardous materials were on board, but CNN confirming with BNSF Railway Network that the train was actually carrying corn syrup. Kentucky State Police are investigating a train derailment in Glendale, Kentucky. That is down in Hardin County. It's going on right now around the area of Highway 222. Police tell us one person is being treated for minor injuries. It is a Norfolk Southern train and a um, a semi was on the tracks, which caused the train driver to have an emergency stop. But as you can see, they are working to clean this up. They said that it could take days from now to get everything back up and running. Shortly after midnight last night, we experienced a train derailment, as you see behind us. There were, uh, there were six cars that were with the train at the time. All were empty. The sixth grade teacher was first arrested last week at Lincoln Acres Elementary School on felony charges of sexual misconduct with a child. She bailed out of Las Colinas Women's Detention Facility, but was arrested again days later on additional charges, including possession of child pornography. Deputy District Attorney Drew Hart described what allegedly happened in the classroom between Ma and the then 12-year-old child, what he called a forcible sex act. Press release does indicate dates, times, amounts of money. The subpoena of financial records, it shows from 2015 to 2017, these Biden family members, including Hunter, James, and Haley Biden, and an unknown Biden and their companies collectively received 1.3 million in payments from accounts related to Rob Walker, and that was the Biden family associate, John. Uh, and it dated March 1st, 2017, less than two months after Joe Biden left public office, State Energy HK Limited, a Chinese company, wired $3 million to Rob Bob Walker's company. And it was the next day that the company wired $1,065,000 to a company associated with James Gillyar. That was the family associate of the Biden family. Afterwards, the Biden family received approximately $1,065,000 in payments over a three-month period in different bank accounts. From the bank records, it appears that the Biden family received approximately one-third of that money obtained from the China wire. And that is per the press release from the committee. Former President President Donald Trump says he believes he will be arrested on Tuesday as part of an investigation by Manhattan's district attorney. Eight people have died and several others remain missing after two migrant smuggling boats capsized off the coast of San Diego. This happened Saturday night, but fog stopped search efforts until Sunday morning. Authorities in parts of the country are asking people to drop mail inside the post office instead of in a blue box. The Leightons, though, are now bypassing mail altogether. We're going to pay as much as we can online. If you're sitting with money at a smaller bank right now, you got to seriously consider moving it to one of the two big defaults, you know, a JP Morgan, a Chase, a Wells Fargo. I, I think these regional banks are, are going to have some real issues regardless of, of what the government does to try to backstop this. Tens of thousands of Wells Fargo customers having problems right now waking up this morning. Customers have reported everything from disappearing money to negative balances with overdraft notifications. Three of California Governor Gavin Newsom's wine companies are held by Silicon Valley Bank. An SVB bank president sits on the board of California Governor's Charity. This information comes to light after Newsom praised the SVB bailout. Gavin Newsom has become a controversial figure, someone who's been a stand-in for kind of liberal hypocrisy ever since uh, he was shown having this fabulous dinner in the middle of COVID after uh, adv advancing these kind of COVID policies that were rather restrict on the rest of the population. And now he has his association with SVB Bank, which has uh, collapsed and been bailed out, not bailed out uh, in kind of terrific and very quick fashion, which to other people demonstrates how willing the government is to step in and save people who are of the af more affluent class as compared to the rest of us. So what 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 should we take from this apparent kind of conflict of interest between the governor having these wine companies that are held by SVB and the uh, alacrity with which the government seems to have stepped in and bailed out these figures? Well, before becoming uh, governor, Newsom was a um, business owner, a big-time business owner. He owned a bunch of different uh, wineries, more than just the three doing uh, business with this 
bank. He also owns a liquor store, uh, restaurants, a uh, big presence in the hospitality industry. What's always struck me about him that's kind of funny is he's sort of a mirror image of Trump, not just in terms of being a uh, businessman uh, turned politician, but also um, if you look at the local California press, it has been reported for a number of years now, these conflicts of interest that exist in the form of also his wife owning a uh, foundation that's received $100,000 from uh, Silicon Valley Bank. And so a lot of the same questions that we saw uh, uh, Trump have to face in 2017 when he first came into office, you know, how are you going to distance yourself from these businesses? And in fact, um, Governor Newsom uh, pursued basically the same line. He ended up establishing a blind trust, which quickly came under criticism because the person that runs that blind trust is his uh, sister. It was a controlled demolition in order to take them down. Now, these specific banks could have been saved, but the powers that be absolutely chose not to. So don't gaslight us that it wasn't a bailout. Don't gaslight us that inherently what you have done is backstop all deposits over $250,000. Everybody owes less than $250,000, which by the way, the mean bank account in America has $5,300 in it, 5,300. Yeah. So this is like clearly definitionally, you are just helping people who have more than 250K in the bank, which is a very exclusive and privileged club. The first bank to actually collapse was a smaller bank called Silvergate. Now, it's a smaller bank in the world of banking, but it was the biggest in the world of crypto. That bank went under on Wednesday. Now, the reason cited was lack of liquidity due to a bank run as a result of the FTX scandal. But then Friday, Silicon Valley Bank went, went under, which, though it wasn't specifically a crypto bank, it did hold lots of crypto startups and VCs as customers. And then suddenly Sunday, completing the crypto bank trifecta, Signature Bank of New York, known in the crypto world as the second largest crypto bank after Silvergate, went under. So now, where do you go if you have crypto? Operation Choke Point 2.0, today I heard this from the management of a small US bank. Today, basically every bank regulator is calling every bank and asking for their liquidity report, asking whether they plan to apply for the Fed program and asking whether they have any exposure to crypto. We find out that actually Silicon Valley Bank didn't need to go under. There was a buyer for Silicon Valley Bank that would have taken them over, taken over the clients. There were buyers who were willing to step in and buy uh, the bank and that the radicals at the FDIC basically weren't going to allow that to happen. I even heard, again, someone told me this directly that was close to the situation, that the Biden administration had a whitelist of companies that were allowed uh, to buy the, the failed bank and companies that weren't. Barney Frank said Monday that he believes the state officials behind the action were trying to make an example of Signature Bank in a takeover that he said was the wrong move. Despite a wave of withdrawals, the bank situation was under control before regulators swooped in. He said, quote, this was just a way to tell people we don't want you dealing with crypto. Here's something else that also supports that all of this is true. There's this bank a bank called Custodia Bank. You've never heard of it, probably, uh, because it is not, uh, the Fed won't allow it to become a member bank. Um, this, it, it's a bank that actually would be a 100% reserve bank rather than fraction, fractional banking. So rather than when you put your money into a bank account, the bank then goes and lends out your money or, or invests part of your money. You know, they, they're supposed to keep like 10% in the bank and then they go and they lend out and invest the rest of your money. This bank was actually going to be 100% reserve banking. Rather than join in and actually help the crypto world, our government has every intent to collapse it. If you control the money, you control the people. By late Wednesday morning, the region's stocks banking index was down around 6%. Credit Suisse was leading the way lower. The embattled Swiss bank saw its shares fall over 20%. It's faced a long series of scandals and seen huge outflows of capital. This week, it admitted to finding material weaknesses in its past financial reporting. On Wednesday, its top investor, Saudi National Bank, said it couldn't put in any more money. President Emmanuel Macron went around his nation's parliament to push through an unpopular bill that raises the retirement age. Violent protests broke out across the country as opponents called for a no-confidence vote for President Macron's government. 
You spent some time here in Paris in the past week. You may well have noticed that rubbish bags are piling up on the streets. Garbage collectors have been on strike for several days now to voice their opposition to those pension reforms. At approximately 7.03 a.m. Central European time, one of the Russian Su-27 aircraft struck the propeller of the MQ-9, causing U.S. forces to have to bring the MQ-9 down in international waters. Several times before the collision, the Su-27s dumped fuel on and flew in front of the MQ-9 in a reckless and unprofessional manner. This incident demonstrates a lack of competence in addition to being unsafe and unprofessional. The Americans persist in saying that they are not involved in the fighting. Here is a new proof that they are directly involved. The same way a military-grade poison ended up in Alexei Navalny's underwear, inexplicably. The same way one oligarch after another seems to be tumbling out of high-rise windows and balconies accidentally. Uh, we see this pattern time and again. The truth is whatever Russia says it is, if you accuse Russia of wrongdoing, you are wrong and Russia will deny it. There's no winning this information war. Similar incidents like this occur all the time. Mm. We have these types of close encounters, if you will, between U.S. and NATO uh, aircraft and Russian fighters in zones where they are both present, military patrolling zones and surveillance drones, so on and so forth. You, you come close, it's a, you know, you, 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 you approach, you get a little look in, you let the other side know we see you, and you move on, and, and it's over. You usually don't, it doesn't become a big headline like, like today. What sets us apart, as you said, is from the U.S. perspective, the Russian plane's behaviors here were reckless, were irresponsible, were incompetent, were environmentally unsound, and downright dangerous. Vladimir Putin has visited Russian-occupied Mariupol in Ukraine. The city is in the Donetsk region, which was annexed by Moscow last year. The Russian president drove around several districts of the city on Saturday and then was shown restoration work at a theater and a university. President Lukashenko of Belarus and President Raisi of Iran have reaffirmed close ties. At a time when the two countries are at odds with the West, especially over the Russia-Ukraine war. Lukashenko arrived in Iran late on Sunday for a two-day visit. His visit marks only the third such instance in the Iran-Belarus diplomatic history. In Iran, Lukashenko praised the perseverance with which the country resisted external pressure. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi on his part hailed three decades of close ties with Belarus. The dignitaries signed multiple cooperation agreements, including joint industrial agricultural transportation and logistics projects. Raisi said their economic partnership was stronger than ever. The economies of the two countries have been hit by Western sanctions in recent years. Military drills between China, Russia and Iran. While the United States has been trying to isolate each of these three nations individually, what we are witnessing is perhaps the birth of a new triangular alliance in Asia, which will go a long way in shaping America's diplomacy in, these, in this part of the world and has also, in many ways, turned American efforts to isolate these nations completely hollow. President Biden meeting today with the prime ministers of major allies, the UK and Australia. He just announced that Australia will buy up to five of the newest American nuclear powered submarines known as the Virginia class. This is all aimed at containing the growing threat from a Chinese government that's flexing its muscle in the region. We use the terms arms race and there's a throwback to the Cold War. And my immediate response, like most people's response, is that is a bad thing. That's a lot of money that otherwise could be invested in hospitals getting spent, right? And it increases the danger because everybody's so well armed. But there was no World War III. For all of the distasteful parts of the Cold War, the fact that no one, no one block of countries made a calculation that said we will get more out of war than, than not war, meant there wasn't a war. That's the heart of the Terence. It's a tricky thing. It requires two things. It requires the other side to believe there is the um, the capability to act on the deterrent threat. That's things like submarines. And it also re relies on the political will to, under to underpin that intent. That's what AUKUS is. Firstly, within the next few days, we will hand over, as I understand, four fully operational aircraft to Ukraine. The rest are being prepared and serviced, and they will be handed over after that. Kremlin has threatened to destroy all fighter jets sent by NATO nations to Ukraine after Poland and Slovakia announced their decision to donate MiG fighter jets. Now, on Thursday, Poland announced that it will be sending four MiG-29s to Ukraine.
becoming the first NATO member to send fighter jets to the country. Poland's move was followed by Slovakia, which promised 13 jets. Slovakia would also send Ukraine part of its KUB air defense system. The International Criminal Court issuing an arrest warrant for President Vladimir Putin for the alleged trafficking of children from Russian-occupied parts of Ukraine. We should note that Ukraine is not a signatory to the ICC, nor is the United States. Um, the United States doesn't recognize the authority of the ICC. Turkey says it will support Finland's bid to join NATO. There has been um, a clear, uh, clear concern from Ankara, and it stems back from absolutely Sweden um, uh, has uh, certainly a large Kurdish population within Sweden. And the, the individuals that Mr. Erdogan is asking Sweden to so-called hand back, uh, those are journalist political opponents of the Erdogan regime that have actually sought political asylum uh, mm -hmm. from Sweden. Uh, Erdogan wants a 120 people to be turned over. This is not going to happen. Interestingly, Sweden has changed its constitution. It's now in the process of changing it again uh, to certainly focus more on increasing counterterrorism cooperation with Turkey. But this handing over of, of these uh, political opponents, that's something that, that Sweden is really not going to be able to do. So we need to find a way forward to allow Turkey, and as you rightly said, Hungary as well, uh, from lifting this blockade. Because the longer this goes, where now Finland will enter NATO, Sweden will be out, uh, the longer that American, British, French, German security guarantees are going to have to be given to Sweden uh, because it will remain outside of NATO. So that's why you saw Jake Sullivan's a very important uh, statement. We need to get Sweden into NATO as soon as possible. Finland has an 830-mile border with Russia. This is a huge strategic defeat for Russia. Um, as much as Mr. Putin does not want NATO to come closer to Russia's borders, it is exactly his actions that are driving countries to seek the safety and security of NATO. The largest joint exercise with the U.S. and South Korea in five years so what more can we expect to see during these exercises? Well, Morgan, they're set to last for 11 days with no breaks, and the U.S. and South Korea will be practicing joint amphibious landings, live artillery fire exercises, and even computerized simulations of what a North Korean attack on South Korea could look like. New Zealand's government has become the latest to ban TikTok on devices with access to its parliamentary network. Why are we all getting uh, deliveries of McDonald's and Taco Bell and Starbucks that none of us ordered. Morgan Courier lives in one of about two dozen homes on the 4900 block of Rangeview that has been swamped with mysterious Uber Eats deliveries over the past three weeks. Sometimes it would just be like four orders of milk for McDonald's and we'd be like, who's ordering this? Free food, it's kind of funny. Absolutely funny, until it's not. And the fast food starts piling up. I've probably received 30 meals, maybe around like 10, probably about 30 to 40. We can probably got about 40 bags of food. Initially, William Neal was loving the free chow until it turned into a game of chicken. About 80% of the time, it was a single chicken McCrispy. Do you huh. like chicken McCrispies? I don't know how I feel about them now. How yeah. many have you eaten? Uh, enough to haunt my dreams. But even more haunting is the question, who is paying for all these meals? Every neighbor has a different idea of what this is. Well, we thought it was credit card fraud. The marketing campaign, rich kids on TikTok who are trying to have some commentary on millennials. Every single theory we have, the more you dig into it, just kind of unravels at some point. All right, this is really fun. An incredible display of sportsmanship in this next story. It was the final quarter of a high school boys basketball game with the score tied up at 64. Martin County High School was playing when suddenly music accompanied them, but it wasn't from their school's band. Their school's band couldn't make the game because of a bus driver shortage, so they were essentially playing in silence. And then coming from their rivals, the Pike Central High School, music erupted. The Pike Central Band Director, Jason Johnson, along with his band, decided they would help level the playing field, so they started performing for the rival team. You may not be feeling great right now, okay? but know who you are. You are excellence. You are hard work, you are powerful, and you are winners. 